You know a lot about golf. Well, we're waiting. Yeah, you heard him right. It is us, those weekend golf guys. I am John Ashton in the studio. He is Jeff Smith on the road again. That's why he's going to sound like he's in a car, because he is. And Wait a minute. I thought we were calling this the mobile studio. Wasn't that the deal? He's Isn't in the mobile studio. We contractually obligated to say that. He is in the mobile studio. That's right. Okay. What nameplate to that mobile studio? Because you got a discount on the car just to call it that, didn't you? <laughs> I think I did. Yeah, that's why I said we're contractually obligated to say that, right? This one's the this one's the suburban, the suburban mobile studio. Mobile studio. There you go. Yes. <laughs> oh man, we we have a very special guest with us today. We're going to talk about golf teaching because you're probably still at home and nobody's out playing golf, but there are things you can do. And we've been talking to some of the more stellar and luminary golf instructors in the country, uh, Jeff Smith included in that, of course. And uh, this week, we've got Kelly Stenzel with us. And let's just run down the the, the obligatory biography type of thing here. Um, I don't wanna, think we have that much time, John. I'm going to golf. <laughs> <laughs> golf Magazine's Top 100 Teachers. Golf Digest named her one of the 50 best women teachers. Uh, golf.com named her one of the most beautiful women in golf. We weren't going to mention that, but our audience is predominantly male and Jeff and I are both very shallow people anyhow. So we thought we'd throw that out. So thanks just, for throwing that out there. You're welcome. It's Kelly, great. <laughs> great to meet you, ma'am. And welcome to those weekend golf guys. How are you? Hey, I'm good. And, and thanks for calling me special because since I've been at home for the last about three weeks, um, it, I don't feel that special. I'm uh <laughs> feeling a little bit out of my element here like cooking and stuff like that so oh. already i love you you've been you've been relegated to the home with everyone else in the best of it here in florida but it's definitely different and you know i'm so, glad to have to get up this morning and take a shower and kind of do my hair so thank you again for that <laughs> you're well, welcome for the most part Chip, you guys have beaches though it's and, and you guys are going to open up or have opened up the beaches haven't you you know, it's funny, that- they're closed. And we were, I'm not, I'm not a beach person because I get so much sun, but my son and I were like, okay, let's right. go for a walk before they close. And they're closed. So mm. I don't, I'm still like, I don't understand why we can't go like find our little beach that we go hide on and stay like, I'll stay 20 feet apart from people, <laughs> right. you know, right. just but like, pretty me- easy. Oh, I understand. I'm not well, your, your governor uh, may, may obviously not be a golfer because there are, what did we say last week, Jeff, 27 states where the golf courses are still open or have been open or never closed. Right. California. Indiana Indiana's one of them. Yeah, right. California's going to reopen soon. They're going to reopen the beaches in Florida, but who knows about the golf courses. But we're going to talk about golf, learning golf, what to do about golf, how to play golf, when to play golf, all kinds of golf stuff for about the next 50 minutes or so. Stick with us. We are those weekend golf guys. These days, it is harder and harder to stay in touch with with family. But staying in touch with that family is more important than ever during this whole social distancing time. And I've got an easy way for you to do it. You know I wouldn't bring up the bad news if I didn't have some good news to help you, right? It's a photo frame that you can email photos to anytime from anywhere. Picture this. All right. I know that we've all been trying. Maybe we get on the, the computer and we try to do a, a, a computer comp video conference or maybe we just call everybody more often or whatever. But think of this. There is an electronic picture frame in your mom's house. OK. And you take pictures of your kids because she loves pictures of your kids. You she's got enough pictures of your kids. That's what she wants. So you take pictures of your kids on your phone and you send it to a exclusive email address. 30 seconds after you send the picture to that address, it shows up on your mom's frame. And, you know, you can be selfish and have it just for your kids, or you can share that email address with other members of the family so everybody can send pictures to mom's frame in her house, whether it's next door, next town, next state, or the other side of the country. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. If you don't love it, if your mom doesn't love it, well, they'll offer you a free refund. But here's the good news, okay? You can get one now at $10 off your purchase if you go to skylightframe.com slash golf and enter the code golf. That's right. We've arranged to get you $10 off your purchase of a skylight frame. We know your parents are going to love it. Just go to skylightframe.com slash golf and enter the code golf. Again, S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T. F R A M E dot com slash golf. Got it? Skylightframe dot com slash golf.
And welcome back. Thanks for hanging. We are those weekend golf guys. I'm John Ashton. He is Jeff Smith. Kelly Stencil, our special guest. And Kelly, you're uh, you're a teacher. Um, you're you're at the uh, the Boca Raton Resort down there. You teach yes, like yes, it's great. It's a big giant resort, Boca Raton Resort and Club, and it's this beautiful hotel. And our golf schools there, and we run daily clinics and lessons. And I can't wait to get back open, but it's kind of a really great place. We, we have a lot of fun. I would imagine that a place like that might attract some kind of, um, how can I say this delicately, golfers that want to learn stuff that you probably would not rather teach them. I always wondered about that. Like, what what kind of what kind of a student do you hate to see approach the tee, and how do you how do you handle that? Oh. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That's, a, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I like this. Okay, chart. first, no go. names, because I know you know who they are in your head, <laughs> yeah. right? No names. Right? You, <laughs> this is well, actually heard on the radio. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have, I have a typical progression at a club. So when I come in, because I'm female, there's this assumption, oh, you're the women's pro. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what happens is I get a lot of the women, which is great. I'll take them. Um, and then they get better because I'm kind of a stickler for fundamentals. And then they're typically their husband or their significant other or whoever they're with will come for part of the lesson. And, and then they get better. And then eventually they'll take their own lesson. But to answer your question, by the time like a real, let's say there's a really difficult student. And like, I know they're difficult because they've been through every other teacher at the club. And by the time they get to me, they didn't want to come to me. They're so desperate. So I already know this. So, and if I know that, I'll let them struggle a little bit. You know, I'm going to see what they're doing wrong pretty, pretty quickly, mm -hmm. but I know they're a little difficult. If I already know that in advance, I'm going to let them miss a few shots until I know, like, they're so desperate, they actually have to listen. So there's two stages of failure by the time I'm going to kind of swoop in and <laughs> save them. Like, okay, enough pain. Let's, let's get going here. <laughs> So you do That's go right. into the, the sadistic approach to teaching golf. No, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to do what you got to do. It's a, it's a responsibility yeah. here. Yeah. You know, when you're talking, one thing, when you were talking about women coming to you a lot because you're the quote unquote women's pro, do they often not argue with you, but tell you that what you're telling them is totally different to what their husbands taught them to do? Yeah. That's a really good question. I hope so. Yeah. That's really true. You know, it's, it's one of the things that I'm pretty particular with is posture. And a lot of times the men are like, bend your knees a lot, bend your knees a lot. And women, not to be too serious here, but women can't bend their knees a lot. They've got to bend forward from their hips. So um, once you get them into pretty good posture, it makes a big difference. So, yeah. And then a lot of times we practice, Kelly said such and such. And if you could stay to the script, uh, I'd be much better. And I'll write scripts for the husband. We just to your significant other. And these are only the things they can say. I'm that, I'm that way with junior parents. I always try to get the parents in the golf lessons so I can talk out loud to the child, but at the parent. And so that way I can say, so these are the things that we want to stick to. We don't want to get outside of this. So if you find that there's anybody else around trying to get you outside of what we're doing here today, you got to back off. You got to, and then I'll turn to the dad and say, okay, so make sure dad that nobody tries to change what's going on here right now. This is where we need to stay for a little while. So the dad knows that I'm really talking to directly him. to him about this. And and I'll go right there. And, you know, I want him there because I always tell him, look, people try to give him too much information too soon. Uh, and they try to make him Tiger Woods when they're eight. You're going to have trouble with this. So just mm. don't, don't wreck it for him. And, and the kid gets to hear it. And then the parents get to hear it. I, I go through that a lot. Yeah, I think that's really smart. I love to engage the, any any parent or any significant other, whoever, just so they can hear what you do say or what you don't say. And that's sometimes that's yeah. important. I got that difficult student thing too. There's a guy, and let's, for lack of a better name, let's just call him John. So John has seen every teacher in the state. He came from New York and saw every teacher there. So he tracks me down and says, I hear you're the best guy in the state. I want golf lessons. I said, okay, so sit down, tell me some history, give me a little bit of this. And I learned that this guy has had 20 different teachers. And I'm thinking, oh boy, no matter what goes on in this lesson, he's already halfway down the road of looking for his 21st teacher. So what are we doing here? Why are you here? And, and then why did you leave all these other people? 
and what do you expect to be different? <laughs> and I'll, I'll just let them spill their guts and then I'll say, okay, what, what do you really want? And it's tough to handle people like that when you know that they are the type that if they're going to be bouncing from coach to coach to coach, you know, how you're actually going to be able to work with them and help them get better because they're not going to stick with whatever's going to happen. I think that's the worst one for me. Can I just throw in here a little aside? Um, yes. A lot of times, Please. like you just did, a lot of people throw out the generic term John for talking about people. In fact, uh, there's also a term, generic term for uh, a restroom facilities. That's John. And some of us who are named John oh. take a little offense to that. I myself call mine yeah. Jim. So <laughs> because then, then I can really get off on telling people, you know, I, I go to the gym first thing every morning. Makes me feel really good, you know, but I do, I do want to ask, do you guys, either of you or both of you, I know a little bit more about you specifically, Jeff, but do you take like a more holistic approach? I mean, you teach golf, but there are other elements that need to be taught in order for people to be good at golf. One of them being physical fitness. Do, do you ever tell students you can't do that until X, Y, or Z can happen in your body? And here's how you make that happen in your body. Kelly, why don't you take this one first? I always think that's a little, yeah. I always think that's a little, little depressing. Like, you know, a lot of times you can see with juniors or um, seniors that their hamstrings haven't kept up with them. So these, especially boys, they'll get super tall and you can see like their hamstrings haven't kept up with them and their posture will be affected. So um, I'll point it out, but then I think it's my job to work around it. I mean, the last thing I want to do is have a golf lesson where I say, okay, well, you need to go and you need to have 25 PT sessions before I can work with you. Right. That's where, I mean, I've been lucky. I've got some great teachers, you know, Mike Adams being my mentor, where you, there's a thousand different golf swings and there's a thousand different ways. So I might refer them just so they don't, you know, they're losing balance. You know, I don't want you to fall for life issues because to me, the life issues are always more important than the golf, but it's my job to work around physical limitations, but point them out. Oh, cool. Right. And, and I, I fall into that same camp as, as Kelly does, John, right, I know. know, because yeah. um, the, the reality of the, the, the thing is, is that most of the people that I work with, and this is, I'm going to take out the high school players, the college players and the mini tour guys. And, you know, the, the ones who are really driven to succeed, I'm going to take those out of the picture for a minute and say, most of the people that I work with, if they're going to do something about their body, it's rarely for the purpose of playing better golf. Mm -hmm. They're going to play golf because they're, they're enjoying it. It's their game. It's their thing. But I have yet to run into very many people who are recreational golfers to serious golfers who are actually going to go to the gym to work on parts of their body just for the purpose of playing better golf. Okay. If they're not in the category of I'm a competitive golfer trying to get better and I'm a tournament player, I don't see very many people who are willing to do it anyway. So my job is to take what they have, learn how their bodies move, learn what they can do best, what's going to be the most powerful, most repetitive, most efficient thing that's going on, and go with that. Mm -hmm. That's that's where I am. And also for a lot of the people I'm sure you both deal with, golf is their exercise. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's but it's a pretty impressive crowd down here in Palm Beach. I mean, I you know, it's it's obviously you've got some older people down here. They take great care of themselves. I have tremendous uh, hope for older, you know, 70, 80, even I've got a couple 90 year olds I teach that are they're amazing. Wow. So my, I'm mm -hmm. lucky a lot of my clientele, they're they're in the gym or working out many days a week and some are just off the charts impressive. That's fantastic. That's great. But they're doing it for life reasons. Yeah. Well, I mean, as, yeah. as we all should, but I do want to point out that uh, should you come to Jeff and be one of those guys that, you know, when you address the ball, you can't see your feet. He, you know, <laughs> he may mention it once or twice. I'm just saying possible. he's that kind of guy. Possible. Right. <laughs> Some, you know, Kelly, what I did with John, when he came to me, um, cause we live about an hour ish apart. Um, when he came up the last time, I didn't really have to mention it. I just took out, you know, those little, uh, the small little curvy mirrors that we have. Yeah. And I just, I yeah. just put it down there in front yeah. and he went, Oh, what are those? I'm like, those are your shoes, John. <laughs> those are your shoes. Uh, we, we will be back with more conversations with Kelly Stenzel and maybe Jeff Smith if he behaves himself when we come right back. We are those weekend golf guys. Don't you move. Of course, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash golf guys. We would love it if you were to go there and like us, facebook.com slash golf guys. 
living with chronic pain has got to be the worst thing. It's more than discomfort, you know, it, it, it affects your whole life. And I know you probably have some type of pain that's prevented you from relaxing or maybe sleeping or even stopped you from exercising. Maybe it's been going for a few weeks and it hasn't improved with any of the treatments you've tried. Yeah, I can relate. With the social distancing stuff, the only thing that I can do outside is play golf. But I play a lot more than I normally do because it's the only thing there is to do. And it hurts my knees. It does. After 18 holes, man, I start walking like, you know, I'm 80 years old. Enter Omax Health. Now, if you're looking to get rid of some nagging muscle and joint pain immediately while providing long-lasting recovery too, you need to try the natural breakthrough pain relief solution called CryoFreeze CBD Roll-On that's been developed by Omax Health. It's non-prescription, triple-action pain relief roll-on, specially formulated to block the pain receptors, to reduce the inflammation, and to improve the muscle and joint flexibility. And it works its magic within 10 minutes of application, and relief can last up to 8 hours much longer than over-the-counter products. I roll it on, and the knees, you know, I do not look like an old man walking up and down the stairs. I, I couldn't do it without it, all right? And right now, Omex Health is offering my listeners 20% off a full bottle of cryo-free CBD pain relief roll-on. Plus, they'll ship it to you for free. This discount also applies toward any other product site-wide. Just go to omaxhealth.com today and enter the code WEEKEND. That's O-M-A-X health.com. Enter the code weekend. Get 20% off cryo freeze and anything site-wide. Pro golfer Cal Stanley uses this stuff. He uses cryo freeze CBD to recover both on and off the course. If it works for him and he plays seven days a week, it'll work for me who's playing like twice a week, three times a week. And it'll work for you no matter what is causing your pain. Cryo freeze. Try it. Omax health.com. Enter the code weekend and get 20% off your cryo freeze or anything sidewide. I want to tell you about the coolest gift you can give your mom for Mother's Day or any other loved one, grandma, whoever. It is called a skylight frame. It is a touch screen photo frame. It comes with an exclusive email address. So everybody you know can send pictures to that email address. And in seconds, those pictures will show up on the frame. It's a 10-inch, beautiful touchscreen, black frame, so it fits right into wherever you have it in the house, fits the decor. And I got to tell you, man, pictures, immediate. My wife sits now and just stares at the picture frame. She says it's even more fun than watching TV. But right now, as a special holiday offer, we can get you $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash golf and then enter the code GOLF. That's right. You get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame. Just go to skylightframe.com slash golf and enter the code GOLF. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com slash golf. It's us back again, those weekend golf guys. I'm John Ashton. He is Jeff Smith, Kelly Stencil, our special guest during the show today. And down there in uh, Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, where it's been hot. But, man, you guys have still been self-quarantined and self-distancing and all that uh, very boring stuff. You guys going crazy down there yet, Kelly? You know, April's a great month down here. It's actually one of my favorite months. So, you know, we're trying to make the best of it. I, you know, when I start to go crazy, I can walk in my neighborhood. And I've been going on these walkabouts where, like, my son's doing virtual school, so Mm -hmm. he will make me a little crazy. So I'm like, okay, I'll see you in a couple hours. And I literally just go walk. Hmm. So, like, there are ways to get out. And we've got, you know, we're set up for an 11-year-old boy. We've got ping pong, portable pickleball, foosball, ball. I mean, we've got everything set up. So we're we're making the best of it. Got stuff to do. That's good because a lot of us are going crazy. If it wasn't for golf, what was it, um, in the southeast? much of the golf courses were still open. Now the national golf foundation said that there were a bunch of uh, courses open in Florida, but everybody I know in Florida, including you, Kelly has said that they haven't been able to play golf. And I don't understand that here in Kentucky. What we're doing is one person to a cart. The flags have been, well, the, the cups have been raised. So you don't have to sink the ball in the cup and bend down and pick it up anymore. You just hit the cup and walk away much easier. And uh, by the way, one of those things that we said was going to happen, happened. A friend of mine had what would have been a hole in one if it had stuck in a hole because it hit the cup, uh-huh. but it didn't yeah. count. <laughs> uh-huh. Told you. Yeah. Told you. That. We talked, we had a, we had a whole little fun show about that. John was trying to convince me at one point <laughs> that it would count. And I just said, well, you know, do you want that for the rest of your life? You want to, you want to claim I, I, that one? You want that I asterisk? <laughs> 
Yeah. See, yeah. the ball wasn't in well, the hole, okay. so. Uh, I'd be breaking that thing. I'm like, okay, I'm going to find a way to break this little thing and get it to go. Yeah. Half the ball has to go to the I'd, I'd find a yeah. way. I'd, I'd take the risk. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And I don't good. I don't care. Like I said, Jeff, I don't care what the official asterisk thing will be, but he is going to claim an ace for the rest of his life. It's probably the first and only one he'll ever have. So, you know, more power to him. We'll just let that yeah. go. But how I many of those have you had, Kelly? I, I think they come in twos. So I've had six and I think it's like wow. mind over matter. So I think I had, I had, but I, my, my best one ever was. I was playing with my father in Ireland. We were playing Belly Bunyan and it was really like foggy you couldn't see anything and over there you don't typically warm up so like the first hole I was a mess I was like a disaster and the second hole I was a disaster too and then the third hole it was like a really long par three it was like 200 yards I hit a three wood and I said no I couldn't see it I said finally I hit a good shot like I finally hit the middle of the club face but you couldn't see it so we're walking down this hill my dad tees off we're walking down this hill playing without caddies because my dad didn't want to pay for a caddy. Um, so, and you yeah. could see this like dew in the ground where the ball had like gone into the hole, which <laughs> oh, was like so this cool. moment, like, but oh, wait, better. So my dad's got like a 50 foot putt, makes it. Whoa. Makes it. Oh. it was, How about that? It was like the One, two action. There's a par three. How about that? You walk off with a group par. It's one of those yeah, I can, cool. Really cool. I can do that's anything cool. you can do better kind of things. So it's not too shabby. So is that one of your is that one of your top three cool golf moments? Yeah, absolutely. So like, let me complete that. They come in twos. So I think like once I have one, I think I can do it. So then like a couple of months later, I had one at Maidstone with one of my best friends, Terry. Oh wow! So um, I think the people you just got to have one, and then you think you can do it, and then you'll have two. Hmm. I like how I like how you think. Hmm. That's that's pretty good. So give me give me a couple more really cool golf moments. Um, I played I played in college. I played at Furman University, and uh, we had an awesome four years with a lot of really great players. And then I turned professional, and I played every foreign tour known to women. I you know I started on the mini tour here, and I didn't love that. I obviously had a little bit of a travel bug. So we, my friend Kathy Hart Wood and I kind of traveled all over the world together. And our first summer, we went over to South Africa. So we kind of jumped off the, what was called the Futures Tour then and said, okay, we're scheduled to play in Europe, but we're going to go to South Africa. So we flew over there for a couple of months. And we played the South, Lady South African Tour. And the first tournament that we played in, we got we got each paired with business partners in the pro-am and Kathy's team, I think ended up winning the pro-am. And I think my team finished second. So this, these guys thought we were like the greatest thing since sliced <laughs> bread. So they own racehorses. So mm. we would go besides trying to play professional golf. We were going to the race track every weekend. We had a ball. We figured out, we looked at the money list and whether you finish first or whether you finish like last, it wasn't that big of a difference. So being just out of college and very young and kind of silly, we decided we were just going to have fun. And we really had a ball. So the South African people took great care of us. We ate and, and the food was so delicious. I don't think my clothes fit me by the time I came back, <laughs> but we just, I, I hope to go back someday. It was the greatest. The people were great. The whole experience we really had a ball. It well, was fabulous. Fun. If you're into horse racing, that's we've fun. got, we've got a little race up here in Louisville. You might enjoy coming up to, I mean, you know, we, our food's good and yeah. we got a lot of stuff they call bourbon. I don't know if you've ever uh, experienced okay. it or not, but <laughs> Can't regulate it. Beer and wine, I think you can regulate. I don't know about bourbon, but I'm willing to try. John always takes the show that direction. I don't know why, John. (laughs) What the drinking direction? Seems that yeah, (laughs) it's always happened that way. We got a newsletter, Kelly. Kelly, it's it's called drinking and driving. It's a it's a golf theme, of course. Yeah. Right. Okay, but that's but what most of us where he started with that. That's what most of us are concerned about on the golf course: drinking and driving. And I'm not talking about the cart. So, you know, there you, <laughs> there you, go. Go. you know, golf, and right? We're always sticking with that. Play better when you drink. Well, and that's the, that's kind of my crew. They definitely play a little better with two drinks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, it takes away, takes away the, the, the fear, the limitations, the, 
you know, it just takes away the edge off is what, yeah, it what takes, a lot of people tell It takes me. away your inhibitions. Like like Kelly said, well, you know, aces come in twos because once you get one, you've convinced yourself you can do it. Well, yeah. you may not convince yourself you can play golf after a couple of drinks, but at least you're not telling yourself you can't anymore, you know? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sounds about the same. I played, I played a fair number of charity events with my girlfriends, and they're not great golfers. So it's almost like a bit of a playing lesson. But it's all—they're all for the kind of their great charities that they work with, and they'll come out and they'll have a few drinks, and we have a, a ball, and we just kind of keep them moving. And and it's you know it's a really great experience. You know, just relax and have fun. That's what it's meant to be, really. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's what's good. Too many people take it too seriously, and that uh, that winds up being a vicious cycle of of defeat actually yes yeah, Once- a story about that one of my one of my students in palm beach and she was kind of a new student to me but a pretty good golfer and we were out in the golf course and she hits this shot and she hits it like way off the toe and it like hits this palm tree and it ricochets back behind us and i started laughing <laughs> and she looked at me like i was just crazy and I like, I had to kind of stop myself and take a step back. I'm like, okay, listen, I'm like, that was funny. I'm like, <laughs> you can't laugh at that. You, you're going to make yourself crazy taking this so seriously. Like, you know, right. I've, I've kind of told my students just, oh, well, like that was funny. You know, yeah. that was really bad. You have to laugh. And it happens was- to the best of you golfers too. It's not just something that hackers do. It, it happens. There's some funny stuff that happens, right? Kelly, what, give me another funny thing that's happened to you in a golf lesson that you just, it sticks out in your mind because it was hilarious. What was it? Um, well, you know, there's a lot of them, but very recently I was playing at, um, playing at the breakers with some students of mine and they're probably 25 years students. This awesome couple from New York. And, you know, they're, they're, they play for fun. They're not great. We don't ever go to the range. You know, they don't really practice. So the odds of this gentleman hitting it straight is pretty slight. <laughs> and he hit a good drive. And there's these two palm trees. And they're literally, I'm not kidding. They're like, there's a foot in between them. So I'm like, just aim for the palm trees. And <laughs> odds are good you won't hit like, it. Like 90% air. Like trees are 90% air. So he hits this shot and he kind of tops it. And it's rolling and it's rolling right for the palm trees. And I'm thinking, oh God, now I'm the bad guy because I told him to aim for the palm trees and damn if he's going to hit the palm trees. The thing, like the ball, like jumps in, in between this one foot space in between the palm trees and rolls up onto the green. And we just died. <laughs> he, he was laughing. I was, like, I was like, I went from like zero to hero in about a second because like That's the so odds funny. of this were just out. Know, but they, you That's know, these are, this is a couple that plays for the rest. I get it. Yeah. You know, 90% I've had, I've had trees are 90% lessons. air, but so's a screen door, and I can't hit a golf ball through one. Yeah, that's right. You know. Go ahead, John. I've had a few lessons that just cracked me up, but there's one that just forever stands out in my head, John. There was, I was giving this lesson to a lady. She was in her oh, late 50s, early 60s. And so all she's trying to do is hit the ball better and farther. That's it. She already hit the ball straight. She had, you know, a club head mile an hour. I think it must have been like six or seven miles an hour. It was not going anywhere. So we started to get her to speed up. And all of a sudden she started to, she started to get some success. And then here it comes and she decides that she's going to swing what she goes. I'm talking to her to swing. It's just as fast as she can on a couple practice swings just to see what she can do. And here it is, top of the backswing. Kelly, you know what's coming. Is all of a sudden, right here, early transition. <laughs> oh, we hear that. And I'm like, oh, boy, here we go. So she is now forever embedded in my mind. Is by 6 o'clock <laughs> lesson. And I'll never forget it. And she laughed so hard. I laughed so hard. We were both, I mean, we almost fell down laughing because that happens. And you're know, like, okay. I've seen some stuff on the lesson tee that's been really funny, but nothing tops that. You know, nothing you know, and, tops that. And, and Jeff, I, I know you guessed on some other radio shows at times. Um, when people ask you that question, my name doesn't come up, does it? Ever? No, I, I usually say John. Oh, okay. I, I just the generic I just John. <laughs> I, I rarely say Ashton. Yeah, well, you know, I just I appreciate that. Look, yeah. Well, on, on this show, it's just implied. We're going to have to do but a I, Google search on that, and I'm going to charge you for whenever it comes up. 
We've, we've got more. We're coming back with it. Stick with us. You want to see how great a golf instructor Jeff Smith really is? It's very easy. $5golfclub.com. I want to talk to you about my wife. She is a critical care nurse, works four 12-hour shifts a week at the hospital. Her niece hurt. And she's tried the Icy Hots and the Bengays of the world only to say, yeah, I got 20 minutes of relief. That pain is right back again. So I got this bottle of stuff in the mail. This is Omax Health. It's called CryoFreeze CBD. They developed it at Omax Health. It's a non-prescription, triple-action pain relief roll-on, specially formulated to block pain receptors, reduce inflammation, and improve muscle and joint flexibility. All right, so she rolled it on and went to work. Came back in the morning, and you know what she said to me? It works! Omax Health is offering our listeners 20% off a full bottle of Crypto Freeze Pain Relief Roll-On, plus free shipping. Now, the discount also applies to anything, any product, site-wide on their website. Just go to omaxhealth.com today. Enter the code WEEKEND and take advantage of this incredible savings. That is omaxhealth.com and enter the code WEEKEND. You'll get 20% off Cryo Freeze and anything else site-wide. omaxhealth.com. And it's us back again. John Ashton in studio, Jeff Smith in the uh, Suburban Mobile studio. Kelly Stencil with us from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Uh, you, you teach at the, the Boca Raton Resort down there and somewhere else too, don't you? Yeah, I do. I also teach at Palm Beach Country Club, which is on the north end of Palm Beach Island. It's this awesome, beautiful golf course. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's nestled right in between the ocean and the intercoastal, so you can see both. Ah, okay. And it's in phenomenal condition. It's all, we have the most amazing superintendent. And a great board who um, takes great care of him, giving him what he needs. So it's this neat little place with a lot of awesome members. It's a kind of a, I always say it's an easy place to be because the membership is so nice. Got some pretty neat people. And that's, that's what's, that's what's fun is I get to teach the greatest people. I learn, I'm pretty sure I learn more from them than they learn from me. They're, they're smart. Yeah. It's great. great. I'm lucky. All right. So that's, then now I got to ask, without a name, what was your favorite person to work with? Who's your favorite person to work with? You can throw a name if you want to. Um, and, and how come? My favorite person? Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. Um, Anybody jump, jump in your head that, like, it's a standout student? Not from a skill level, but just from a, another, any other reason. You know, I'm lucky. I, I'm super thankful to be quite busy. So I get to choose who I want to teach. So I make a real effort to be around people that um, are positive and are are wanting to learn. So I would say, gosh, I'm not even sure I could answer that because I have so many awesome students. One of my advantages is I get to see people over time. So I'll have a lot of my clients who take like their same lesson time every week. But you know, there's, there's one student, you know, at Palm Beach Country Club that comes to mind. Her name's Lori. And She's just a very special person, and she's one of those people that connects connect, as a connector. So, besides the fact that I get to spend time with her and her family, um, she's also done really well and really improved. So, she's brought a lot of her friends to me. So, you know, she pops to mind just because she's like this mo- the most generous, amazing person to the point that, like, when I had my son and I needed some help, like she would be doing it before I even asked her. So. But I, you know, like I said, I'm lucky. There's like a lot of really generous beyond words people down here. I was being interviewed by somebody and they asked me, you know, who was, you know, my favorite students. And they just assumed it'd be Tyler Duncan or be somebody else that I've helped with, that have, you know, gone on to do great things in golf. But, you know, I, I can't tell you that it's just that it's anybody else other than this guy. This guy's name's Mitch Robinson. And, and Mitch came to me. He was a, a high school basketball player from northern Indiana, got himself a scholarship to Indiana State to go play basketball, and he was messing around on 4th of July, one the summer between senior year and going off to college, and uh, he was in a, a, a trampoline accident. He had a big problem, and he wound up being paralyzed from the neck down. Now, it took Mitch four years to essentially move. And then all of a sudden, his pinky toe moved. And then all of a sudden, he got some feeling and he got some, and the next thing you know, he was up and moving around. So Mitch finds golf to, he wants to take up golf and he wants it from me. He wants me to help him. And so he's, he's living in Columbus um, and he's, he's moving very difficult 
right? It's, it's tough for him to do anything. And here this guy is in six months time. I had him hitting an eight iron, but he got it out there 125 yards, pretty straight. And then all of a sudden he hit about 175 yard drive. And now today, Kelly, he's an actual golfer. He goes on the golf course. He actually goes and plays with his brother um, and his buddies. And he's just progressed so much. It's just, it, out, out of all the people I've worked with, that's the my absolute standout favorite guy. He's This guy's my hero. Yeah. He's, he's just amazing. amazing. And he's, uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's just an amazing, just an amazing thought of somebody coming back from being paralyzed. All of a sudden, golf is one of the things that brought him out of it. What a, what a cool, what a cool thought. Yeah. Right? And I agree with you. It's like those moments. Like that's like like that's that's an unbelievable story. I just think of like the difference. It's that quality of life thing. You know, like when somebody does something that they didn't think that they could do, and if you can be uh, like a small but it may be an important part of that journey, that's that's what it's all about. I mean, that's what makes it fun. Those those very special moments. That is a great story. Yeah, it, it really is. There's there's some things that that this game does for us as coaches, you know, I, I don't know whether this is like a parent moment or a proud coach moment. I don't know, but you know, at all the kids that I've helped go through uh, high school and get themselves into college, there's four of them that really stand out in my mind and three of them are my own kids. So signing day, you know, for, for four kids stands out in my mind, three of them, you know, two, my two daughters and my son going to their signing was a proud coach moment, but I think that that was more parent at the same time, but there's this other kid who just came from absolute nothing and um, just absolute nothing. It's out in the middle of nowhere, Southern Indiana. And, you know, he, uh, he kept working hard, kept working hard, kept working hard. And uh, next thing you know, he's, he's signing his letter of intent to go play for Vincennes university. And it just, you know, I, I went, I, I go to, I go to all of them, but that one probably meant more to me than all the rest of them outside of my own kids just mm. because of, I know where the kid came from and I know what the kid did. Yeah. And it, it just, some of those things are just, for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's this specialization at what age and play multiple sports. So you've seen your three kids and this, this other young mm-hmm. man. Um, obviously yep. what, what's your thought on at what age should they specialize or really shouldn't they? What's, I mean, I was, we have an 11-year-old boy, so we try to spread him out a little bit. Uh, what I'm seeing is, you know, certainly people and kids, they develop at different ages. Some of them mature and some of them uh, grow physically. Uh, they, they might not be mentally ready or emotionally be ready, but maybe their body's ready. You know, and, and there's that's the blend of things of when you start to, to specialize because there's a kid right now that I've been working with that, there's no chance he should have specialized because he was such a great athlete in anything that he did, but he chose golf and he could have been an all-star basketball player at the same time, but he gave it up. And I'm not sure he should have given it up. And right now he's a junior in high school, but I think from the college recruitment aspect, he probably needed to give, give up basketball when he did, which was as a freshman. And uh, just so he could, concentrate on more of, of going to play golf tournaments and, and show off his skills at that level. But I, th- I see a lot of kids that I think it's important that they're multi-sport athletes because they're just naturally developing. And, and I think as it relates to some of that college recruiting stuff, I talk to a lot of coaches and I, I get the sense from them that they realize that they have been recruiting too soon, sophomores and juniors, and they've been they've been getting them too soon, and the kids either flame out or burn out, or or aren't there yet, or other kids pass them by, the late bloomers, so to speak. You know, the kids who are great when they're freshmen in high school aren't necessarily great when they're freshmen in college, mm-hmm. um, for one reason or another. Compared to the rest of them, maybe they're they've lost the fire for it, or maybe their bodies changed a little. Oh, he must have hit one of those great bodies in their minds. There you go. You're back. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just love to see these kids. Yeah. In the mobile office in the mountains of Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. Um, 
I love to see the kids develop their bodies and their minds and, and they get sharper athletically and, and uh, they, they just mature in how they handle tough situations and it makes them better. So uh, I love to see kids be kids for as long as they can, even though a good portion of my job is to help kids get into college golf. I still like the fact that the ones who make it are always the ones who are good athletes. Um, yeah. You know, I got a daughter who, uh, who was driving the car next to me you know, or driving the car sitting next to me. She was a swimmer uh, as well as a golfer. And she played volleyball and was a cheerleader younger. Um, and she did multiple things and she was an athlete. But boy, let me tell you, the swimming is what really made her very strong. She still looked like a girl, uh, but she was still in much better physical condition and she was stronger and hit the ball much farther than everybody else. And that really helped. That is a huge advantage. I was yeah. a gymnast when I was younger. I, I played multiple sports, um, and I was—I would consider myself a late bloomer. I wasn't that great, you know, when I went to Furman, uh, but I could out practice and I could outwork everybody. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But with our son, we're definitely trying to kind of get him, keep him playing multiple sports. Although he's begging us to play travel baseball. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Travel. Look, traveling is tough. It is traveling is tough when you're yeah. a parent. Oh my! Yeah. And Kelly, you, real quick, you, you wrote a book about women in golf, right? Women playing golf. Yeah. How? yeah you know, it's, uh, I actually wrote three. Um, it's kind of a funny story because I just, I didn't sit down to write a book. I just was working uh, at Grandfather Golf and Country Club in Linville, North Carolina with John McNeely. And I just started writing things down and I just kept writing and writing and writing and writing. Um, and I just eventually looked at it and said, well, this could be a book. And I finished it as if it were a book. So uh, so when my first book was published, I'll tell you kind of a funny story. I had typed it up on a word processor. That's how long ago it was. Okay. Um, and there were probably computers, but I was probably afraid to use them. And I took this bus from the Hamptons into New York City to meet with this book publisher. A friend of mine had arranged for me to meet with him. So I took the bus in. I changed in the bathroom a Burger King into like business attire. And I sat down with this gentleman at this really fancy restaurant. It was, his name was Donald I. Fine. He was a division of Penguin Publishing. So it goes to show you, it's not what you know, but who you know. Mm -hmm. So he was, he was older. I would say he was 80 something. Whoa. And he said, well, why should I publish your book? So I just kind of went through this reason why women were different and that there wasn't anything out there and there really wasn't. And there's still not a lot. And so about like 15 minutes into lunch, he said, okay, we're going to publish it. And I was just sitting there dying. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, and it, it went off the rails a little bit after that. I had a co-author who had some health issues and wanted to call it Coffees with Kelly. And it, yeah. it you know, everything looks easier from the outside looking in. But I always thought, I just hope somewhere down the road, I'll say it was worth it. And it's, believe me, it's not for the money. But there's been people who have, I, you know, have written me saying you've really helped my golf game. And, you know, the idea that I could help people that I never met, yeah. uh, that has really made it all that time kind of worth it. So they're all, all women's guide to golf series. And every once in a while, somebody still picks one up here yeah. and there. That's great. And I guess the, the other question really is cool. most, most of us would like to know, why don't enough women play golf? And how do you get more women interested in the game? It's do we do we scare them off? I, I don't know. I think that's a bit of a myth. I think they're you know, I think our media culture likes to make everything negative instead of positive. I mean, everywhere I go, there's lots of women playing golf, and this idea that everybody's quitting. I mean, everybody's just busy with life, and do they quit just because they didn't play in the last month? They'll they'll come back. Yeah. You know, it's it's about momentum. So. You know, I think that there's some good programs out there. I think the LPGA is doing a good job with their um, women's amateur network. It's, you know, I, I think it's a myth. I think the more we can make it family friendly, like if I could bring my son when mm -hmm. he's younger and there's a place for him to take a junior clinic while I take a ladies clinic, mm -hmm. um, I think that's a big help. Like they do that at my tennis center. The kids clinic is the same time as the adult clinic. Yeah. And then eventually the kids get so good, they move into the adult clinic and that's a big day for them. So, you know, I, there's a lot. I I them out there. Yeah, I think there's probably some management changes that need to go on in the uh, upper echelons of golf clubs in order to uh, 
change some of this stuff. But we've got a few minutes yet to talk, and we will do that when we come right back. Hang with us. We are those weekend golf guys. Of course, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash golf guys. We would love it if you were to go there and like us, facebook.com slash golf guys. I want to tell you about the coolest gift you can give your mom for Mother's Day or any other loved one, grandma, whoever. It is called a skylight frame. It is a touch screen photo frame. It comes with an exclusive email address. So everybody you know can send pictures to that email address. And in seconds, those pictures will show up on the frame. It's a 10 inch, beautiful touch screen, black frame. So it fits right into wherever you have it in the house, fits the decor. And I got to tell you, man, pictures, immediate. My wife sits now and just stares at the picture frame. She says it's even more fun than watching TV. But right now, as a special holiday offer, we can get you $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash golf and then enter the code golf. That's right. You get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame. Just go to skylightframe.com slash golf and enter the code golf. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com slash golf. Hey, nice that you didn't go anywhere because we didn't either. John Ashton here in the studio. Jeff Smith in the Suburban Mobile Studio, I think. And uh, Yes, sir. All right, still there. Good. Hadn't, didn't hear any I'm road noise. Here. I wasn't sure. And Kelly Stenzel still with us, too, from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, Boca Raton uh, Resort. And she teaches there in the Palm Beach Country Club. She teaches there. And this is the thing I love, Kelly, is I, I sit here and I listen to you and I listen to Jeff. And it's like. You know, you don't even have to stand in front of these people sometimes to just understand how to get better at this game. Just listening to y'all talk, it it kind of builds up an inner excitement that, you know, I'm going to go gla- grab my clubs now and go out and try to play some more and maybe get my first ace or my first two. Why, why not? There's a hole out there somewhere. You might as well knock it in there, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the goal, right? Let's see how many times we can hit this thing and see how few times we can hit this thing all at the same in the same game. That's right. right. Let's go play. Let's play as much as we can and don't do it very often. You know, let's not hit too many shots when we're out there. Exactly. Kelly, you have any, any uh, advice, a sage wisdom that you can impart in about 30 to 45 seconds to, uh, to people who are enamored of the game and decide that they want to actually learn how to play it well? Well, I'm a big stickler on setup. So I think that if your grip is reasonable, the club face is going to try to come in nice and straight. And if your posture is good, the ball is going to try to get in the way. So my kind of short piece of advice is get a good setup routine. You know, know what your grip should be, which might need to change a little bit here to there. Mm -hmm. Know what your posture should be. Put it in the same order every time and understand you should be in the same posture with every single club. Find an order. And if I'm going to pick one for you, I'll I'll pick, you know, set the club behind the ball. Set your hands on the club, bend forward from your hips when you do that, and then step your feet until your hands are right below your shoulders. So if uh, if you have a good setup routine, it's going to make a huge difference. Good grip, good I posture. Agree. You know, the I one agree. a good start is always a good start. The one thing you learn when you talk to a good teacher is this game is nowhere near as difficult as you think it should be. Because when you <laughs> when you do it right, and it's easier to do it right when you I'm, – I'm, okay, I'm just going to – you know what I'm trying to say. Um, good, I, good teachers. So. Good teachers can make it actually so you can play this game. Take it from me. I played many years thinking it was the most difficult thing in the world to do right, and then met some of these guys, and suddenly, hey, I can do it a lot better, and so can you too. You can either listen to us and listen to Jeff and some of our guests, or you can go to thoseweekendgolfguys.com and check out some of the stuff we do there. Uh, follow us on Facebook at facebook.com/golfguys, or just be here every week. Okay. Uh, Pick up the clubs and remember, it's not all that hard. Go out and play some golf. And for this week's bonus content, we go back to this weekend two years ago in 2018, where Jeff and I were talking about the 10 best clubs of this decade. It's us back again, those weekend golf guys. John Ashton here, Jeff Smith in Columbus at the Golf Cave and the uh, classic golf clubs. Globalgolf.com is their 10th anniversary. These guys started out just 10 years ago, man, and they have become like the premier reseller of golf clubs. You know what? They've been friends of the show. They have been. They've got this year's list out now of the 10 can't-miss golf clubs of the past decade. And I guarantee you've seen uh, you've seen these in everybody's bag. Every golf course you've been to, you probably have a bunch in yours. But let's start out with the tailor-made R11 driver. Yeah, 
That was you a know great what? one. Two man. of my students still have them. Yeah, that was a great one, man. Now those yeah. weren't adjustable, were they? No. That was just a good, well-made driver. That was one of the first ones that had the white color. And the R11 so. had the white. Yeah. Yeah. The Titleist Vokey Spin Milled Wedge. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, how many I of us? Some of those in my bag right now. Yeah. How many of us go Vokies? Oh. Mm-hmm. I want one of those. No, you don't. You want four of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And now here we come to one that I have in my bag. Actually, I have two of them. Ping G10 Fairway Woods. Oh. Got the G10. Got a three and a five, man. Love them. They're not quite vintage, but they're gaining on it. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I did break one. <laughs> had one of those shots where I looked up, oh, yeah. hit the ground okay. before the ball. And the head of my three wood went farther than the ball did, but uh, got it. So uh, imagine repaired. looking up and still smacking the ground that steeply. That would be really hard to accomplish, wouldn't it? Well, maybe really? I didn't look up. Had I was I just made up that excuse, man. I okay. don't know what I did. <laughs> All I know up. is I did not see the head of the club hit the ground. <laughs> it's that eyes closed thing. That's what it was. Yeah. If you didn't see that, I used to do that, man. Uh, the Taylor made burner 2.0 irons. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. hot. Yeah. Hence the name burner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of folks I know uh, still have those in the bag. And the Titleist 910 driver. Oh, I am there, buddy. Yeah, that is my stick. I say, love it. That's like a. 910s are awesome. People keep looking at me going, why don't you get a new one? I'm like, um, <laughs> when they make one better than hit, this, I will. <laughs> hit this thing yet. Yeah. <laughs> I seem to know where it's going. Yeah. And that's a big deal. Man, you have got to see Jeff swing that thing. I mean, he just steps up and it's so smooth and it's not fast. He doesn't even grunt. There's no effort whatsoever. Just phew. and the thing is out of sight. I can only see about 180 yards down the fairway after that. I, I have wish no you idea where the ball new goes. Glasses and then you can still say that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the 910 is a great driver. Cleveland 588 wedges. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of guys still have those. Yeah. Are those the ones that are in the, like, look like you've left them out in the rain? Uh, depending on what finish. Okay. You know, that that's the thing. It's more the finish than it is the style. They come the in style. stainless and rust, right? Mm-hmm. So the two finishes. Yeah. There. <laughs> well, there's a lot of guys who, you know, the they like the, the oxidized finish. Yeah. Because it provides a bit more spin because it's a little gritty, but it also mm-hmm. avoids the glare. So do sunglasses. Yeah. Seen a lot of those in my day. Yeah. Five eighty eights. Yeah. Okay. How about the the rocket balls fairway wood? Yeah. From Taylor Made. Yeah. Still pretty hot. Yeah. And that was that was a model that was only on the market for a couple of years, wasn't it? It was a big well, thing, and then they went off to others. Because it was Taylor Made. Oh yeah. They, they right. don't keep stuff for around for a little while, even though it's they find a piece of product that's great, sells terrific, and then all of a sudden they uh, change well, it. We're on to the next thing. Yeah. Now is that because they just they like the planned obsolescence thing, or because they got new they, ownership every two and a half years? Well, I there had to be some influence of both. <laughs> uh, and another one. Now I've got the Ping G10 Fairway Woods in my bag, and here's the other, the second club on the list that I have is the Seymour FGP Putter. How about that? That's got that uh, laser FGP? sight alignment. What's that? I think I think FGP stands for frickin' great putter. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, Jim Grunberg's got that kind of sense of humor. I'm sure he probably was thinking something like that. Probably, but it's got the alignment aid on it. Yeah, a little red line on the on the putter head, and the putter head is huge. The only drawback to this putter is that when you lose the head cover that comes with it, like I did about the yeah. third week I owned it. Right. Um, you can't just walk into a pro shop and buy a new head cover that fits it. How about like, how about a hybrid? You put a hybrid head cover on it? Uh, no, the hybrid head covers are not long enough. They're wow. wide enough, but not long enough. This is <laughs> extra long and it's, uh, it's <laughs> kind of, kind of frustrating because you got all these fancy, you know, you go up to uh, the Pete Dye course and they've got all those putter head covers that they'll give you because they like you. And right. Uh, None of them fit. Another it's one like of you have to go online. Yeah, I know. Sniff it out. Yeah, another one of your favorites, the Titleist AP two irons. Oh yeah. Now, I know you're looking for a set of AP threes, but uh, mm-hmm. AP twos will do in a pinch. Huh? They're 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 really good. 
I've, I've played with a set of AP2s for a long time. And, you know, yeah, I'd like to upgrade to the AP3s because they look really good. <laughs> but uh, so do those AP2s. Yeah. I was going to say the AP3s, basically, it's 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 a uh, – um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's it's Juiced just a, up. Do they do they hit better or are they – Yeah, they're farther. They're lower, okay. longer. They're stronger lofted. Yeah, they're juiced okay. up. Juiced up. Okay. okay. They really are, yeah. I didn't know if it maybe it was just it was, a, you know, an appearance thing or not. Um, and then, of course, the uh, the Scotty Cameron Studio putters, stainless. Yeah. I mean, the Scotty Ca- – I guess we can say this because, you know, we don't accept product advertising, so who cares? But is Scotty Cameron really better putters? They feel pretty good, man. They really do. But putter is a feel thing. That's what I was going to bring up. I mean, yeah, it's what and works for you. There's a lot of people who like them. Yeah. You know, they, 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 may, they make them really well. Um, yeah. You know, and a lot of people really love the feel of it. So, yeah. you and then find one a, that you like, man. Then there's a lot of people who just buy a new putter every week because they think it's the putter that's going to help them sink more putts, not yeah. the technique. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a look. If you want to do it right, you get fit for a putter head and a shaft length and an angle mm-hmm. and a grip size and a weight, and you just you just do it. And it doesn't have to be brand X or Y, but yeah. you know you get fit. Yeah. Well, that's, exactly. that's the thing with every golf club, isn't it? I mean, if you just break yeah. down, don't buy it off the rack, go to the shop and say, hey, what do I need? But a lot of people who know what they're talking about talk people into getting fit. And then, but a lot of people aren't going to talk to a lot of people who know what they're talking about. And they're just going to listen to the marketing because yeah. it is what it is, right? It's exactly. got to work for this guy. It's got to work for me. Exactly. You know, I, I have got to give some a shout out and some kudos to a guy who I think is very obnoxious to begin with. And he's has a very overblown estimation of how good his golf clubs are. But um, what's his face with PXG, the GoDaddy uh, uh, guy? Parsons. Parsons, yeah. You can't just go in and buy a set of PXGs. No. You have to get fitted. Yeah. Because he knows you're going to pay $3,000 for a set of irons. Mm-hmm. They damn well better work. Yeah. And in order for them to work, they have to fit you perfectly. They do. So getting fitted for the set is part and parcel of buying them as far as they're concerned. It's part of manufacturing the club is they have to make it so that it fits you perfectly. No and, doubt. And that's that's what I got to say. In If I was ever going to spend $3,000 on a set of clubs, I'd probably get fitted for them too. But that day probably so. is not going to come very soon. Uh, probably not. No. Probably not. And then last, but by no means least, number 10 on the list, and I'm sure you've got one of these because I've seen these everywhere, Adam's Idea Pro Hybrids. You know, I've seen a lot of those in my students' bags. Yeah. You know, that they're solid. Hybrid was basically the Adam's Idea, wasn't it? The What was the first one? The um, the Rescue Club, they called it or something, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. TaylorMade had a rescue. Adam's had something. Yeah, what was that called? I forget. It's been I a while. Remember. Yeah, I can't remember. Oh, I was, I was, Too long ago, I've slept since then. Uh, something lies. Uh, tough lies. Tight yeah. lies. Tight lies. Yeah, they had yeah. a really shallow face club with a little yeah. scoopy thing on the bottom of it. And yeah. made people hit some really good fairway shots. If they could get the club down to the bottom of the ball, they really did a good job. Yeah. The trouble is, is, if you came in too steep, you'd hit a lot of pop-ups. Did you? Because you didn't have a really tall face. Well, that's true, yeah. You know, they drive the whole face underneath below the ball. Next thing you know, yeah. So if you come in a little too steep on one of those clubs, that one and the old Orlemar, both of those were really shallow face clubs. Yeah. So go out and uh, check out the garage, see what uh, you've got in there, and uh, or you know keep your eyes open um, next time you're at the garage sale because obviously some of your neighbors probably don't know what they have. You know, it's yeah. like finding a painting for four ninety nine that was originally painted by Van Gogh or something. It happens. It happens. It happens. All right. Thoseweekendgolfguys.com is where you need to go to uh, see us access all of our episodes, uh, get some great news, some good stuff. Facebook.com slash golfguys is our Facebook page. Go there, like us, and follow us, or follow us on Twitter at WKND Golf Guys. Uh, contact page at thoseweekendgolfguys.com. You can call us, leave a message. We'll put you on the air. You got a question for Jeff or whatever, and you want to play some better golf, where you going to go? Five dollar golf club dot com. I'd uh, go there. I'd go there right now. And then go out to your favorite golf course and play some golf.